Hey guys, Shane here, so welcome to this video where I'm going to take you through my airbrush setup. So the airbrush and compressor is probably one of the most important bits of equipment a scale modeler might have in his or hers arsenal. And I'm going to talk you through my experience with airbrushing. I, I've been at it now for about four years and I think I've picked up a few things I can kind of pass on. So first thing I'm going to look at is the compressor. So I have a very cheap compressor I bought off eBay, I don't even know what make it is. Um, here are some of the specs on it, if that helps anyone. It cost me about maybe 100 euro shipped, it's quite cheap. But the most important aspect of this compressor is what you see here. It's got a moisture trap, which is this clear plastic chamber, and it's also got a regulator allowing me to ferry the air pressure. It also has got a large air tank underneath the compressor, which allows me to have a constant airflow. As long as it's got those two features, you're good to go. So I was very, very fortunate to get my hands on a Hardrun Steinbeck airbrush as my first airbrush. Now I know these are quite expensive, but there is plenty of other airbrush companies out there that are a little bit more affordable, which I'm going to talk about in more in a few moments. And I also picked up this little Spray Max cleaning pot, which also acts as my Impropt You airbrush stand. It just allows you to purge your airbrush of paint by just blasting airbrush cleaner through your airbrush into this and it's got a basic filter system to kind of get some of the nasty shit out of the air. So back to the airbrush, so I have a Harder and Steenbeck Evolution CR Plus. Again it's a slightly upper range airbrush, it's a bit expensive and I've had this for four years and it's been running very strong. I have bought a few different upgrade sets and replaced the nozzle once or twice because I was a bit rough with it but as you can see it's very easy to take down which is great for maintenance. And I would recommend that when you're buying your first airbrush, try to buy the best one in your budget range. Again, I was quite fortunate to be able to afford this one, and I know not everyone has that type of disposable income, and to be honest with you, I don't now either. I was just very lucky at the time. However, there's plenty of companies such as Premier, Pache, Spray Max, all those on the higher end, but still affordable, things like Iwata, where you can buy an airbrush for 60 or 70 um, euros or dollars and they actually work quite well they might not have the same lifespan as one of these things do because I know people who have these airbrushes now for 15 to 20 years and are still running but still always work to the best you can get in your price range I would not recommend using the cheap airbrushes that come free with a compressor they are just impossible to take down and put back together they're just nightmares uh, also a thing of note is try if you can to get an airbrush that's double action meaning that when you push down on the trigger get air and when you pull back like so you get paint also having the paint cup on the top which is known as a gravity fed airbrush is the way to go also handy thing with the c or plus airbrush range and the other hardrun steenbe airbrushes is that you actually can buy different needles and nozzle sets allowing you to go from a 0.4 nozzle right down to a 0.2 mil nozzle and needle set. Right now I'm rocking the 0 0.2 and that allows me to do like pencil lines. I have some very basic tools as well for cleaning and cleaning and maintaining your airbrush is immensely important. So I have a very nice little set of cleaning brushes that I bought from Harden Steinbeck. Again they're a little bit more expensive but I had a cheaper set for years and I always found that the cheap brushes were just a little bit too rough on the airbrush and it would damage some of the more delicate parts and especially the very, very fragile air nozzle that I'll talk about in a few minutes that's made out of very soft brass, very easy to rupture them. So these softer bits of brushes are far better. Another invaluable bit of kit that I was a little bit late to get is this tool here for removing the air seal in the back of the airbrush. So you just insert it through the back and you can remove the um, air seal out of the airbrush. This allows you to change the O-rings that are found in the air valve itself. I got the double air valve upgrade set again um, a couple of months back and it, is, it actually did make a great um, improvement to the performance of my airbrush. Again, different manufacturers will have different tools that are specifically made for them. So they, again, just do a bit of homework and slowly start adding bits to your, your toolbox. I still just added parts and upgrades to my airbrush as I went just to keep costs down. But again, maintenance is one of the most important elements to any airbrush. Now there's one bit of kit that I should have, but I don't, and that's the ultrasonic cleaner. I just get around that by buying some cheap airbrush cleaner and just giving the entire airbrush a bath 
once I take it apart over for a day or two to take any paint off it, but the ultrasonic cleaners are the way to go. Another infallible bit of kit for any airbrush that's got a, a detachable air nozzle, which is most of them, is what's known as a reamer, which is basically this type of spike as you can see here. And this is great for removing any fouling. I really recommend that you get one that's either built for your airbrush or a generic one that can fit in. And uh, this has basically saved my airbrush nozzles for a long time. So normally what I'll do is I will fill a plastic shot glass full of thinner or a cleaner, give it a bath for 24 hours to loosen up anything that's stuck inside the nozzle and then come in with the reamer and uh, give it a quick clean and then come in with those brushes. So for paints and auxiliary products, I tend to use three brands. So I've, I'm a big, big proponent of Flejo. I actually quite like their products. A lot of people bitch about them. I really like them. I've recently gone to using Tamiya and they're really good and a lot as difficult to use as one would think. And I also use a lot of AK paints. But one of the most important tools I've found and one of the most versatile tools I've found is the Filet-O Airbrush Flow Improver. The Flow Improver is so handy you can tin down model color paints to spray through the airbrush with it and also by adding a drop or two of it you can basically tin down model air colors as well as AK interactive paints and you can also use the Flow Improver to tin down Games Workshop's Citadel paint range for airbrushing too. It's fantastic. It's a very versatile tool that can be used over at least three that I know of paint brands. If they do not work with I've also been trying um, Filet or should I say Tamiya paints and these are actually really good. So these are alcohol based acrylic paints and they're actually really good. You have to tin them a little bit heavier, about 60% thinner or 70% thinner to paint. But they do go down really well and they're not that difficult. Again, just buy yourself um, some plastic pipettes or eyedroppers from your local pharmacy or drugstore and that way then you have more control over your ratios. Another great bit of kit that I found that I use in all my projects are the Filejo Premium Varnishes. So in this case I have the matte and the gloss varnish. Sometimes I find with their normal varnish that they spec with little kind of crystalline flakes whereas this with the uh, premium stuff it does not have that effect and they go down glass smooth. So these are the basic things I use in my airbrush setup guys. I know it's not a proper in-depth video but I hope it might be useful to you.